All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we're going to be looking a little bit at the Interstellar mod again. I've been playing around with it a bit more, and oh my god, it is, it is kind of complicated. <laughs> I still haven't figured out exactly how most of the stuff in the mod works quite right yet. But I'm working on it, so today I kind of wanted to look at two of the other propulsion methods. And I think probably the best place to start is here in the assembly building. And if we come in here, and let's just grab one of these uh, remote guidance systems just so we don't kill a Kerbal. That uh, <laughs> wouldn't be good. And throw on one of the aluminium hybrid rockets. Now as you can see, this thing's freaking huge. I mean, <laughs> look at the size of it compared to the solid rocket booster that it's modeled on. I mean, look at the size difference between the two of those. <laughs> it is quite a cool engine because it is a solid rocket booster, but as I kind of vaguely alluded to in the last episode, it's a solid rocket that can be throttled because it has its own oxidizer and aluminium inside of it and it can change the amount of oxidizer to throttle up or throttle down. And these sorts of rockets exist in, in the real world, of course. Like all these engines, they either exist or are theoretical in one way, shape, or form. But there are hybrid rockets that do exist. I, I can't remember exactly what they use, but uh, this one in this version of the Interstellar mod is the aluminium hybrid rocket. So let's just jump this thing right onto the launch pad to take a look at how exactly it works. And we load, waiting to load. Always waiting to load. <laughs> okay, there we go. We are on the launch pad with this thing. And again, it's a solid rocket booster, but it's one that can be throttled. So right now, I've got nothing on it. We can build up, lower it down, and back up and down again. I, I actually think it's quite cool because, again, it's a solid rocket. It, it's all self-contained in this one thing. Rocket engine, fuel, oxidizer, all that. But, it uh, can throttle, unlike the other solid rocket boosters we have in the game at the moment. And so you could potentially use these things for landings. I mean, it's uh, even though it is a solid rocket booster, you could use this to land on the moon or on Duno or whatever it is that you're wanting to sort of place your Kerbal flags because it can throttle, so you can come and bring it into a safe landing, though, wow, it is kind of twitchy. I'm trying to bring it into a landing right now, but it is uh, a twitchy rocket, and we're coming in on the angle. Lovely. Oh, oh, oh god, and it, it exploded. <laughs> okay, so if you're a good pilot, you can bring it in for a landing. You know what, let's, uh, let's revert that to launch and just give that another go. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I I'm not a good pilot. Let's actually turn on the SAS. And let's just launch this thing a bit. And then throttle it down. Now we have sort of changed path a little. I'm gonna change us a bit more, try and take us off of the landing pad. And let's see if I can get this thing to land successfully. Probably not, but hey, you know what? It's worth a try <laughs> But yeah, wow, this thing actually has quite a bit of power in it. I uh, barely throttled in it It can take this thing up pretty quick granted right now. It is just this uh, Singular hybrid rocket on here. We have no real capsule or any other body to this thing so <laughs> Uh, take that as you will, and we're going that direction. I don't want us to be going in that direction. Let's try and kill that. And ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, okay. There we go! 
we landed it. <laughs> we landed ourselves a, a nice little aluminium hybrid rocket. So this thing is quite cool. I can imagine some interesting crafts that people who are skilled could potentially make to use these for like giant landers. I can only imagine like one of those science modules in the center and a couple of these around it. That would be pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, that that is the aluminium hybrid rocket. It's a fun little thing. But that's all on that for now. Now, as I said, I'm kind of having trouble with the other forms of propulsion, <laughs> especially these uh, thermal rockets and the, oh, what are they called? The plasma thrusters. Oh, man, I cannot figure those out at the moment. I'm going to have to spend some more time on that. But if we go over to the space plane hangar, I have kind of gotten the thermal turbo jet to work. And I say kind of because I think it's, uh, well, I can get the engine to work. It's more of my horrible plane design. <laughs> uh, it is an interesting little aircraft that I built with this thing. But uh, there it is, a thermal turbojet, only 18 parts. It is, I think, the smallest aircraft I've built. And it's, uh, ugh, it's, it's interesting. We've got a thermal turbojet here, which if we go to that page, there we are. It does require an air intake, but it does also require heat, which is where this nuclear reactor comes in. It has to be touching it. I discovered that if I have the nuclear reactor on the other side of the electrical generator, the turbojet does not work. It does not work at all in the slightest. So <laughs> the reactor does actually have to be touching it. And then we've got the generator here so that we have electrical power on this craft. And then uh, wings for lift, some air scoops for intake, and of course wheels. You always need wheels. <laughs> and since this one is actually crude, let's take out Bill here and grab one of our new people. Hmm, how about Patsby Kerman? There we are. He's not very brave, but very, very stupid. That can only end well. So <laughs> let's just I'll save that and go to launch on the runway. Now, this is a very, very interesting engine. It's, it works like any other sort of jet engine, but it requires that heat from the reactor. And, of course, it doesn't take fuel. It's a purely electric engine, so this thing can just keep going and going and going. It doesn't really matter whatsoever. So it would actually be a really cool design for taking planes to other planets. I was thinking about this earlier. If I could figure out how to fly this thing better, <laughs> you know, take this to Duna, and you could have a little electric planes flying all over with this wonderful thermal turbojet. So, as you can see, it has different toggle propellant modes, either atmospheric thermal jet, or, ooh, it's not actually letting me switch. It was earlier. I wonder if I have to have the engine activated. Oh, no, it's not letting me switch. That's strange. I tried it earlier, and it was going in between intake air and, oh, oh, and atmospheric it was switching between. So I don't know why it's not letting me switch now. I don't know if it's something that I changed, but oh well, oh well. We uh, <laughs> just need to throttle up. And now, like I said, this is a horrible, horrible little plane design. Oh yeah, brakes. <laughs> Whoop. Oh. Oh, hello. Oh, there it goes. Okay, it took a little bit of doing, but it got there eventually. Oh God, why are you turning? Why are you turning? Lift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it keeps doing that whenever I try to take this thing off. It uh, just turns either to the right or the left. It's never the same. So I can't really figure that one out. But because it's such a small and lightweight craft, and the amount of lift I have with these wings, the thing takes off on a dime. It just is very, very tricky to fly. This thing kind of flips very, very easily. And this engine... It can actually flare out quite, quite easily. I don't know if I just need more air into, oh god, oh god, Patsby, Patsby, pull it out, pull it out, man, no, oh god, oh Patsby, no, 
Uh, maybe, maybe if we can. Oh, no, Patsby's dead. Well, yeah, like I said, twitchy. And, oh, that's a nuclear reactor rolling around. Oh, the EPA is going to be on us for that one. Oh, God. <laughs> Let's revert to launch. God, I love that button. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like I said, it's very, very twitchy to fly. I think that's probably just my horrible, horrible design. But, uh, yeah, it's it flips quite easily and just you lose complete control of this craft on just its own whim. And see, now it's turning that direction. So last time it turned to the right, this time to the left. But like I said, with all the wings, all the control surfaces we have, it just takes off on a dime. So yeah, this plane, you gotta really slowly move. There is no possibility of any quick reactions while flying with this thing. Because if you try, well, you're going to die. <laughs> uh, but other than that, it's it's uh, quite a nifty little plane. And well, we have no fuel, so like I said, we could use this thing to easily go anywhere we want it to. And we wouldn't burn up fuel. We could have this thing circumnavigate the globe and it would be perfectly fine. Now, one of the things with this engine, it does produce a decent amount of thrust. And with this tiny little plane, it works well. But if you make any larger of a plane, you got to start adding additional engines. It's Even though it has a, f a decent amount of uh, thrust, it's not a large amount. So I, I tried to make a slightly larger plane than this, just by adding a few extra things. I, I tried to add like one of the uh, larger uh, central air intakes. I'm forgetting what they're called at the moment. The name escapes me, but even that amount of weight just there in the center was enough that this thing took a lot longer to take off. It still could, just not very well. And as you can see, we're only going about 75 meters per second. So even with this tiny little aircraft, it's not going to be breaking any land speed records. But still, it's a plane that will just keep on going forever and ever and ever as long as uh, that nuclear reactor holds out. Which I don't actually know if these reactors ever do go out. Is uh, I haven't been playing around with this mod for too long, but I've never seen anything on these dip down. So, I, I don't know. Perhaps the they can go forever, though I sincerely doubt it. Uh, there are a lot of different things in this mod that, you know, allow you to refuel different things. So, I'm assuming it's the same with the nuclear reactor. It just lasts a lot longer, but will eventually go out just like anything else. It'll just take a very, very long time. But wow, Patsby is really enjoying himself in there. And, yeah, I, I actually think that's going to be it for this episode. Kind of a short one today, mainly because I couldn't figure out those other engines. I'm still having issues with those. <laughs> and also, as I don't have a whole lot of time to record this evening. Uh, but, yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode today where we played around with the cool little aluminium hybrid rocket as well as this thermal turbojet. Which, uh, yeah, makes for a nice little tiny aircraft. And hey, if you guys have any suggestions on uh, how I could get those other engines working, if you've played around with the Interstellar mod, I would love to hear them. Or, uh, hey, if you have just any other hints or tips, I am always open to those as well. So, yeah, I do hope that you enjoyed this episode and that you come back for the next. But until then... Thank you for watching, my friends, and as always, have a good one.